Okay, so we've taken uh, the KD property test, uh, and it's, it's really important that you have the, those information uh, equations in your brain because that is part of the algebra skill. All right, so uh, this one right here, I'm not going to worry about right now, but the the ITED handouts. Uh, we're going to try to center on those in the next couple of weeks as well. Okay? And so I, what I want you to do right now is turn to page 107 in your textbook. All right? And I'm going to start by asking a question. And the question is this. What is the distributive property rule? It says that x times y plus z equals what? X, y. x times y plus x times, x times z. Okay, now we're going to start talking about factoring. Factoring is the opposite of distributing. So we're going to start with this. We're going to start with x times y plus x times z, and we want to find out what is the x. Okay, what are we going to find out? What is the x? What is the x? Okay, so on page 107 at the top, problem 21. Problem 21. What will the x be? The x is 3 because that is called the common factor. Factor are numbers used in a multiplication problem. Factors are. So the common factor is 3. And when I divide and take the 3 out of 3x, I have x left. I have the plus sign left. And then when I take the factor of 3 away from 3 times y, I have y left. Okay, so this is the factoring of problem 21. All right, now, using your notes paper, because it's part of your homework, do problem 22. You have 5x plus 5y. What does it equal? Five parentheses. X plus y. Now, here's my question. Why is that true? Because that is the distributive property of multiplication over addition. That's the distributive property that you just had on the Katie test. Only it's in reverse. Are we allowed to reverse those? No. Yes. The symmetric property says if you have x equals y, then you also have y equals x. So therefore, I can change these around and say, in the symmetric property, if I do this, then this is the other side. Okay? So because of the, of the properties of uh, algebra, I am allowed to start with what you were writing down here, I can start that and then I can reverse the process because the symmetric property says these two things are equal, it doesn't matter which one I put on the left, which one I put on the right. Okay? That's why factoring works because it's the distributive property in reverse. Okay, now, so let's look at problem 24. That's not hard, is it? All right, what's the common factor? Seven. Seven. So pull the seven out, what do you have left? All right, now, this, here's a little bit of insurance. If that's true, then distribute it. If you distribute the 7 into what you wrote, will you get problem 24? That's, that's, that's how you check. All right, and that one was pretty simple, so I don't think you've got too many people get that one wrong. All right, now let's go to 26. Okay, 26 is a little bit harder. It says 3 
A minus 6. Okay, what's the common factor there? 3. The 3, right? Okay, so it equals 3 times. Now, 3 times what gives me 3A? A. A, okay? Now, 3 times what gives me 6? 3 times 2, right? So that's a 2 here. Okay, now let's distribute. 3 times A is how much? 3A. 3A plus... Uh-oh, I did it wrong. This should have been a minus sign, shouldn't it? Now, 3A minus 3 times 2 is 6. Okay? Now, why did I do that? Because you probably will. Okay? I did that on purpose. Okay? Now, does that make sense? But what would happen if I didn't check it? Do I got wrong. All right? Same thing. I could have done this. What would have happened if I would have put a 6 here? Do it really wrong. Then when I check it, 6 times 3 is 18. Oh, that's the wrong number. All right? And those types of things happen often because you're just learning the algebra. Okay? All right, now you look at 28, try the same thing. And I always make my R's capital because they're easier to see. Small R looks a lot like a 1 <laughs> in some people's handwriting. My R looks like an R. Okay? All right, so what's the common factor? Okay, what would happen if I chose 5? Five times 4R minus 2. Is that correct? No. no. It, oh, wait, well, wait, wait, now it depends on the question, right? All right, is this side equal to that side? Yes. Yes, it is. But is there a common factor between 4 and 2? There's another 2. Right? I can pull, I can pull a 2 out of here which will make this 5 times 2, and then 2r minus 1. That's where the 10 comes from. All right, and so, so one of the skills, and I said this for a reason, one of the directions, skill you have to understand, is going to say factor completely. If it says factor completely, then you can't leave 4r minus 2 because there's another factor you could have pulled out. All right now, that's important on, on test problems because on test problems, this is counted wrong. Only 10 times r of 2r minus 1 is the correct answer because the directions will say factor completely. All right? Okay, now look at number 30 and Write that down. Um, for Mr. Mr. Yes. Buster, for 28, I did 2 parentheses 10R minus 5. All right, you, did, you have the same thing. You factored it, but you didn't factor it completely. Uh -huh. So you still had more work to do. Okay. All right, okay, that's the same thing. Right, did everybody hear that? She said she, she saw the 2, she pulled the 2 out. Well, if she pulled the 2 out, what's left here? 10, and what's left here is 5. So she would have had something in this parenthesis that she could have also factored. So in order to factor completely, she wasn't done. Now, that, uh, let me go back to that. Because, well, Gracie, if you pull one set of factors out because you see them, that's a good start. Agree? Mm -hmm. All right. The, the thing that you have to do is look at what you wrote down as the final answer and make sure that there isn't something else you could have pulled out. All right. So it, what she did was not wrong. Stopping would have been the wrong thing because there was still more work to do. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Now. Okay, now let's look at the bottom part. It says simplify the expression. All right, so now we're going to go to 42. All right, let's look at 41 first. Just because I don't want to take away your fun. Okay, this says 5x 
plus 3 times x minus 2. All right, now, from a pure standpoint, what work do I need to do first? Distribute. Starts with a D. Distribute. Distribute. So I'm going to copy the 5x and then say plus 3x minus 6. And I was thinking about making a mistake there, but I didn't. Okay? Now, do I have like terms? Yes. All right, so only the 5x and the 3x can be combined. And if I did the distributive property in reverse, what is the common factor between 5x and 3x? X. It's x, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, so what I'm going to do is also I'm going to commute, and I'm going to put the x on the back side and put the parentheses on the front. That's commutative property multiplication. Now, what's left in here? 5. 5 plus 3. three. three. That's why we can combine our heads. If you had to show the work, you would have to show the, the factoring, which is the distributed property in reverse, and the x would be first, and you'd have to commute the x to the back side, and then you replace 5 plus 3 with a number fact and get 8x. Well, you could do that in your head just by looking at it, can't you? Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Okay, so the properties that you were using are part of what you actually do in your head to be able to solve this. All right now, once we get here, and I have 8x minus 6, 8x minus 6, why don't I get 2x as an answer? Because they're not common terms. Because they're not common terms. And I've said this before, this is x to the first power, and this happens to be x to the zero power. So because these exponents have, are not identical, you can't do the combinations beyond 8x minus 6. Okay, I had one student that struggled with that last week. Okay, so that's the reason I'm getting that out again. All right, so uh, now, in the rest of this section, you're going to be Distributing and combining like terms. All right now, let's look at uh, 52. Look at 52. All right now, I, I want to show you something. If you distribute in 52, if you distribute the 5, what will the whole number be in the first distributing? 30. Well, it'll be 30. And then if you distribute the 3, what will the whole number be in the second part? 21. 21. So guess what you're going to combine? 30 plus 21, right? So, now do you notice we didn't write it all out, but we did part of it in our heads? Mm -hmm. right? Later on, that's going to be helpful. When we get into working with equations, um, and, uh, and we've got to plot the equation, you're going to be able to use the skill that I just demonstrated to find out where the, where the point is that you start. So, in other words, if you distribute the 5 into the 2x, you get what? 10x. 10x. How many x's are in the second part? 1. Oh, no. 3 times 6 is not 1, is it? No. All right, so, so, so yeah, yes, there's 1x, but I'm talking about in the, when you do the distributing, what will be the coefficient? The coefficient will be what? 18. 18. What was the coefficient on the first one? 10. And so what happens when you combine them? 18 plus 10 is 28x, right? You're going you're gonna to get very quickly, you're going to be able to do that in your head, right? Because why? Because you're smart, okay? Now, so you take your time, you show how the, how the work's supposed to be done, and then you'll be able to, to hopefully do it without making a mistake. And then if there was a negative involved in that, you would, instead of adding them together, you would subtract them. All right, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right now, number 50, speaking of negatives, what do I distribute in the first one in number 50? All right, look at the book. Number 50, what do I distribute first? Negative 7. Negative 7. So what is negative 7 times 6? Mm -hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> negative, uh, negative 42. Okay. All right, and so now I have a negative 42 and a positive 41x. How much is that going to be? 
Negative 42 and positive 41. Add them together. That'd be negative. Well, how far apart are they? 42 and 41. Which one is greater, the negatives or the positives? Negative. So therefore it is negative, negative 1x. X. Or it gets negative x. Or negative x, yep. Now, why negative x? Because of the identity property. It says you can drop the 1, okay? All right, now, all right, so that is that section. Now let's turn over to page 113. Now, 113, the directions say, name the property or axiom or definition that is described in the problem. So problem number one on page 113 says x plus y equals y plus x. What property is that? Commutative, Commutative of addition. addition. Okay. Now, what about two? All right, that is x, it's r times s equals s times r, and so that's the commutative of multiplication. Mm -hmm. All right now, in number three, it says x subtract y is the same as x plus negative y. It's associative, right? That is not associative, although there is parentheses. That ha what happened to the plus sign? Gotcha. Or the negative sign? Gotcha. Changed into plus, so that's the definition of subtraction. That's the definition of subtraction. All right, now, guess what number four is? What's changed? There's a, there's a, the divide is changed into multiply. That's the definition of division. Those two are not part of the KD rules, but they're things that, that you can do. Okay, so number three is what? Definition of subtraction. Definition of subtraction. Why is it the definition of subtraction? What is the difference between the left side and the right side? The subtract was changed into something else using copy change change. Okay. Now, in number four, what had, what's different about the left side and the right side? In number four, the dividing is the divide sign disappeared, and using copy change change, so that's the definition of division. All right. Now, number five, what do you see? See, I see parentheses. So is that associated property? No. No, because no. the first thing you check is look at the order. What's the first number? It's hey, second number. A. But on the other side, it's. It's C, right? So therefore, something moved. All right, what property is that? Commutative. The commutative of addition, right? Commutative of addition. All right, now look at six. Commutative of, commutative of multiplication. Commutative of multiplication. Now, number seven looks almost identical to number six, doesn't it? But look at the order. What, what the letters are A, B, and C on both sides. So it's not commutative. And then you're going to look for associative of addition. All right? Okay, now, uh, problem number 10. What do you say? Distributing. Distributed property, but it's in reverse, right? So it would be either called factoring or distributing uh, along with uh, the symmetric property. All right, uh, number 12. Factoring or distributing. All right, it's factoring or the distributed property in reverse along with the commutative because the R is backward, is on the end instead of on the beginning. All right, number 14. It's commutative. Why? Because the order changed. Because the order's changed, right? Commutative of addition. All right, number 18. All right, what do you notice between the two sides? What's the first change? The definition the, the, the division sign is changed to multiply, so that is the definition, definition of division because it's copy, change, change. All right? That makes sense? Okay, now turn the page and get really freaked out. <laughs> okay, now, all right, what we're going to do is I've got these listed here. All right, we're going to do these a little differently. This is not part of your assignment, but we're going to look at problems. Okay, now, what they're doing here 
is that they are taking the first one and it says equals the second one. All right, so normally the first line, the second line would be, would be on the same line on your paper. All right, so what's, what has changed between the first line and the second line? The X is combined. All right, the X is combined or there's been factoring, right? And so that is the distributive property along with the symmetric property or uh, you could use the commutative property. All right, so these two uh, make, make up the first move. Now, the second move is between the, uh, the second line and the third line. What's happened there? Two-thirds plus ten-thirds is twelve-thirds. Twelve-thirds is four. That's a number fact. So that's sub substitution of a number fact. All right? Okay, now, next one. Here's the first problem. Five, negative five plus two y. It's changed to two y plus negative five. Okay, what allows you to take uh, the 2y and bring it from second place to first place? Commutative. Somebody? Distributive. No, there's no distributive because you'd have to have some multiplying in there. All right, what property allows you to move the negative 5 from first place to second place or move the, ne the 2y from second place to first place? Starts with a C. Commutative, Commutative property of? Addition. All right, now, it looks a little different, but that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to say what took place. Now, between the second line and third line, what changed? Look at it. What changed? This says 2y plus negative 5. This says 2y minus. What changed? All right, so what is it called? The definition of subtraction. Only it's in reverse. Now, do you see why you need those KD properties? <laughs> All right, because this is confusing, is it not? Yes. Okay, now, I have one day to teach you this. In a regular uh, public school, we would be doing this for five days in a row. <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so now let's go, to, let's go to number 36 and let's look at how this goes. All right, what's the difference between the first line and the second line? All right, what's missing in the second line? Parentheses. The parentheses. What property allows that to occur? The distributive property. Good, Hannah. Everybody see that? It's the distribu you distributed the six into the parentheses. Okay, now that gives, you, that gives you the second line. What's the difference between the second line and the third line? Parentheses. Parentheses. Therefore, it's what property? Associative, Associative property. All right, I would also use order of operations because in order of operations, you would have to do the first two. But the property name that most of us would do would be associated. Okay, now, what's the difference between this uh, 8 plus 6x and the 6x plus 8? They moved, right? What, what property allows you, allows you to move numbers? Associative. Not associative. So, C, commutative property of addition. All right, I don't see your eyes. Your eyes are telling me you're confused, right? Okay, all right, so let's go back. All right, now this is where, if, if you're confused by this, your hand should be going up and say, Mr. Belcher, I don't understand what you're doing. Okay, so let's go back and look again. All right, in this particular problem, if I can get there. Oh, I can't. I mean, I gotta do it differently. What do I need to do? I need to insert a text box. You're all Give me just a second, now we'll have something we can do here. Alright, Phil. Alright, now I can do it. Okay, so here's, what, here's where we're at. In the box. Now, the difference between the box and the line underneath it are the, are the step that we're on. What is the difference between the box and the line underneath it? The first one starts with 8 plus 6x. The next one starts with 6x plus 8. 
All right, and the property that allows me to do that is what? Somebody say it. What, what property allows you to change the, the A from first place to second place? Associative. Not associative. Associative. Commutative. Commutative means to move. What word means move? Commutative. All right, so when something's moved, it's commutative property. That's why, that's why I have written this. Commutative property, that's the answer. All right, now, what is the difference between the line in the box and the line underneath it now? All right, the parentheses switch. Okay, what property allows that to occur? The associative property of addition, right? That's why D says associative property. Okay, now, what's the difference between the line in the box and the line underneath it now? They added, okay, and uh, and according to this, that means that there was a number fact. So we added the two numbers together and replaced it with, with its, its uh, sum. So that's a number fact. All right, okay, now let's look at 38. All right, what happens at 38 between the first line and the second line? What do you say? They put the five, negative five in parentheses. Uh, all right, they put the negative five in parentheses and they, they got rid of the subtract sign and replaced it with a plus sign. Okay, what property allows me to do that? That's the definition of subtraction. All right, so you do copy, change, change, right? So that's the definition of subtraction because we got rid of the subtract sign and we gave its equivalent with an adding property. All right, now, next one. What happened here? All right, you see the distributing? The three was distributed in, so that's the distributive property of multiplication over addition. All right, now, then what happened between the box line and the line underneath it? They multiplied negative five times three. All right, so therefore, it is a number fact substitution, right? And then finally, what happened between the box line and the last line now? What do you see change? The first change is the plus is gone, and it's gone into a minus sign. That's the definition of subtraction. All right, and one of the keys to, to figuring this stuff out is to look either at each side or to look at one line under the other and say, what changed? Because if something changed, then they were doing a little bit of algebra. Right, does that make sense? Okay, now... Yours are a little bit simpler. You don't have this, this particular arrangement is not what you're assigned. You're assigned um, two through 30, which is the ones where, where each line is the same. All right, see this? You're doing two through 30 and then 52 to 60. So let's turn over to 52 and on page 115. All right, now, the, let's look at the directions. I had three different people this past week that gave me answers that were not what the directions asked them to give me. All right, so if you're not reading the directions, you might be doing something that you're, you don't have to do for that problem, okay? So what do the directions say? If it is an expression, simplify it. If it's an equation, solve it. How do you know the difference? What's the difference between expression and equation? The equal sign is in the middle. The equal sign is in the middle when? It's an equation. When it's an equation, the equal sign is in the middle. Right? If, if there's no equal sign or the equal sign is on the end, then you just have basically the left member of an expression. Okay, so 51, is it expression or equation? Expression. expression. Therefore, you cannot find the value of X. Hear what I'm saying? You cannot find the value of X. All you can do is simplify the 
common terms. Now, this is there's something else I want to make sure we do on this one. <sighs> I lost it. All right, three x minus three x minus seven plus four. Okay, write that problem on your paper. I, I want to show you something that will help. Me. 3x, this is problem 51. Okay, now, circle the 3x, circle the minus 7, and circle the plus 4. All right, how many terms is that? Three. That's three terms. How many of those terms are positive, and how do you know? There's two positive terms. A positive 3x and a positive 4. All right. If we did the definition of subtraction, this would become plus negative 7. And that would be negative. And when I look at it, I, I, I take this and don't necessarily change it with copy, change, change. Just say that's negative 7. So now when I add negative 7 plus 4, what do I get? Negative 3. Negative 3. What I, what I found was this. People doing this. All right, that's not right. The, the associated property does not work for subtraction. It only works for addition. So therefore, I would have had to change this to plus negative 7. And then I still have negative 7 plus 4, which is the same as this, negative 7 plus 4. All right, so don't skip the subtract, because that's going to mess up your answer. And then the other thing is, if it's an equation and you solve it, and then check it, you'll know whether it's right. Okay, so look at 52. 5x minus 8 equals 3. 5x minus 8 equals 3. All right, now, this is Algebra 1. In Algebra 1, you have to show the algebra change. So what can I do to simplify this left side? I can get rid of the 8. How do I do that? Positive eight. Plus 8. Add 8 to both sides. And we're doing it this way because doesn't 8 equal 8? Yeah. So positive 8 equals positive 8. And then I can take this equal sign and this equal sign and add them together. All right. Now, when I do that, that makes a 0. This makes 5x equals 11. But that's not what we want. What do we want? X. X. How many? 1x. Positive or negative? Positive. positive. So I want this to be positive 1, so I'm going to divide it by 5. Because positive 5 divided by positive 5 is positive 1. If I divide this side by 5, the, uh, the multiplication property of equality, or the division property of equality, says if I divide this side by 5, I divide this side by 5, or multiply by 1 fifth. And so now I have x equals... 11. 11 over 5. You just let, let it be there. Unless the directions ask you for something else. As long as this is simplified. If, 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 if this were 15 over 5, you'd have to simplify it to 3. Okay? Unless the direction says to the nearest tenth of a, of a point. Then, then you'd have to do the division. Alright, question on that. Question on that. Why are we doing this? Because we are showing algebra. We're showing algebra. All right, if some of these problems are simple enough that people can actually come up with the answer in their head. Right? I understand that. But that's not what you're doing. You're showing that you understand the algebra so that when we get to the harder problem, you know how to manipulate it because it's algebra. All right? For instance, if I didn't give you that problem and I gave you this, if 
I give you this problem, what's the first step? Plus you've got to get this by itself, so you're going to add what? Positive 8.11. Positive 8.11. If I add positive 8.11 to this side, I add positive 8.11 to this side. All right? This is 0, so now I have 2.7x equals, but I don't have to do that, I'm going to throw that in the calculator. Right? Do it. Throw it out in the calculator. All right? You start with the negative button under the 3. Negative 3.2 plus 8.11. Positive 4.99. Is that right? 91. 91. Okay. 4.91. Everybody got that? In your calculator, you got that. Some people just get their calculators out. All right, now, what do I do next? Divide by 2.7. I have to divide because I want a positive 1x. So in order to do that, I have to divide by 2.7. Had this been negative, I'd have been dividing by negative 2.7, so I get positive 1 when I'm done. All right, if I divide this side by negative, then I have to divide this side by negative, and there's my calculator problem. Okay, put that in your calculator. 1.82. Oh, it doesn't come out even? No. All right, so what now what are we going to do? <sighs> let, me, let me do this one. All right, so I can't turn around. Somebody tell me what the numbers are. Numbers that are first, top number. 4.91. 4. 0.91 divided by negative 2.7. I think I do 2.7. Okay, and then equals. Oh, is that what you got? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, all right, so therefore we have to chop this off someplace. I would chop it off right here. I would chop, whoa, don't do that, come on, that's not what I wanted. I would chop it off right here because the one does not affect the five. When I round, the five will stay there, right? And so I would say negative 1.8185 is my answer. Yeah, that's as close as I can get to rounding. And see, I, and then I'm chopping all the rest of that off because what does the one that's in blue, what does the one do to the five when you round? Nothing. Nothing, right? And so you chop it off. And, and so if you're, gonna, if you're gonna do your calculator work, the easiest thing to do is find the first four, three, two, one, or zero and chop it off at that. Because that, that will be rounding, and the real answer will be slightly above what you did when you checked, but that's, that's the easiest thing to do. If, if I would have cut it off at the 5 and said this was 1.818, is that correct? No. Why? Because the 5 makes that go to a 9. So if I wanted to do that, I could do it to the 9, but... In my opinion, cutting it off with the real number. Can you do it with the first one after the decimal? Um, yeah, you could. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I could have taken it off there. Except that what happened, what's the 8 do to that 1? Makes it a 2. But it's still. Uh, yeah, you could do that and round it. But if you're good, we used to, I, I used to say this. I, I taught the word truncate. Truncate means to chop. And in Atlanta, that's good, right? Those of you that. Baseball, all right, Atlanta Braves, they do the chop, never mind. Okay. Football, anyway, football, football is a different country, all right? But in, uh, if you, trunc you truncate numbers, if they're four or less, and so all of this will come off and that five will be the rounded value. Right. If I chose to round to the third decimal place, I've got rounding to do because I have a 5. If I chose this, I, the 8 makes the 1 go to a 2. 
Now, if the directions say round it to the second place, second decimal place, or round it to the hundredth place, then you could do that. But if you're going to give an answer, give it to the best place you can where you're truncating all of this so this is what's actually in the calculator. So when you go back, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find this whole thing in the calculator. Right? That, that, believe me, that will help you. And when you get into Algebra 2, you're going to have enough decimals to where you can verify that your answer is correct. Okay? Does that help? All right, so um, that takes care of that part. And then you also have 3, 6. Now, you're doing 3, 6, 2 to 40. All right, if you turn to page 120, 120 and 121, if you'll notice, all of those are single problems saying, which property is this? Okay, now, here, here's my uh, statement to you guys. If you hadn't started memorizing the properties, could you do those problems right now? No. There's no way. It's impossible, right? Unless you go back and flip and try to find the, but the, there's, not a, there's not even a blue box where they're all together. The answers are actually on several different pages, and it's impossible to do that if you haven't got most of them memorized. All right, so this is fair. This is fair, all right? And so that is the second part. That's 3, 6, you're doing 2 to 40 even. All right, and again, make sure that you give the right answer. All right, the first thing you check for is commutative. If the numbers are in different order, then the commutative property is probably involved. If not, then you look for distributive. Then after that, you look for the other ones. Okay? All right, so any questions? Oh, praise the Lord. Look at that. We got a few minutes left over. Okay. Um, all right. So we can go. I want to go back and discuss. If I, I think I've got it here. Uh, no, I don't. How are it? Is this here? Mm. It's not the one I want. I, I was. I had that in line, but I think you guys did a good job on that one. Um, all right, I need to go here. Which for the one you just did or the ones you're doing? The ones we did last week. Okay. That, that's the one I just grabbed, right? Yeah. I just collected? Mm -hmm. I mean, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Here's, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to, um, you can grade your paper, right? Mark an X if it's wrong. All right. And we're going to talk about some of these. Okay. First of all, right here, this is the one. Uh, by a number means multiplying by the reciprocal. That is division. So number number one should be division. All right. If not, put an X in the front. Okay. Now I'm going to also make this larger so we can read it back here. Okay, yes. All right, then I, is that the one I just returned? Okay, all right, good, okay. All right, th that's okay, that's okay, because uh, there's a lot of mistakes on this one. Okay, now, what is, what is that word? That word, simplify. Simplify means that you have to combine like terms. Make the same expression with less numbers, less uh, characters. All right, I have two things I can combine, and that is the 5 and the 7, and so 12 plus x, or x plus 12. Now, why is either of those correct? 
because of commuting. Commuted right? property, right? That's commutative, right? And so some people, they would have taken the 5 and got it next to the 7, so they would have had x plus 12. If you broke the 7 up to where the 5 is, then you'd have 12 plus x. But either one of those is right. Why can't we solve for x? Because they're not like terms. No, they aren't. Well, they're not like terms. So why can't we solve for x? Because there's no equal sign. There's no equal sign. It's not an equation. And even if I put an equal sign here, it's not an equation. So you can't find the value of x. All right, now, what happens in number 3? All right, how many terms are there? On your paper, circle the three terms. Positive 12, negative, and positive. All right? What gets combined? Two. The two constants, right? Both of them are positive. Agree? So therefore, I have 14 minus 2x. Now, what we learned today can I factor? Can I factor? No. Yeah. Do, do these have a common factor? Yes. Yeah. All right. What have I just written on the board? Starts with a D. It's a distributed property. All right. Okay. So that's what we did today. But to simplify this, now I. Some people made a 10 here because, I think, because they thought that negative affected both twos, is I think why. That circle on those terms helps you get, get that error out of your head. Okay, now, what does the next direction say? Solve and, and check. That means if all you gave me was x equals, you have not done your job. All right, so first thing is that I should show this. At the very least, I have to show that. And then I could show this, but I have to show x equals 8. Then I say 2 times 8 plus 3 equals 19, and it checks. 16, 17, 18, 19. All right, so you have to show this, you have to show this, and you have to show this to be able to get full credit. Yeah, but Mr. Belcher, we all know the answer is A. Yes, that's right, but that's not what you're teaching. I am teaching you to do algebra, not find answers. Okay? If the problems get harder and you can do the algebra, then you'll be able to find the answer. But, you know, Mr. Spencer, I don't understand that one. Did you do the work? No. Well, then start by doing the work. Okay? Now, what about this one? Alright, is that an equation? Okay, so the first thing is I have a positive 4 and a positive 7, which is how much? 11. 11. So this is 11 minus x. If I use the definition of subtraction, I could have said negative 11, I mean negative x plus 11 if I wanted to do that, but I'm going to leave it here. Okay, so equals 13. That has to show. Then I need to get this by itself, so I subtract 11, and I get negative x equals 2. I don't? Okay, that, now, that's not the answer, because what answer do I want? D, D, what answer do I want? Or CC, what answer do I want? Uh, you've left the room, come back. Okay, is this, is this the answer I'm looking for? I can't see it. Why? I'm blind. Where's your glasses? I had contacts, but I ran out for a trial. I was supposed to get them Wednesday. You don't have backup glasses? I broke them. Oh my, I'm sorry. We I have All right. Um, so this is negative x, so I need a positive. So therefore, I multiply this side 
times negative 1, and I multiply this side times negative 1. Negative times negative is positive, and then 2 times that is negative 2. Now, am I done? That's half credit. That's the solve. How do you do the check? You say 4 minus negative 2 plus 7 equals 13. That's 4 plus 2 plus 7 equals 13, and that does check. Alright, now, that's a lot of work for one problem. But that is the algebra that you're supposed to be doing. Alright, and if you don't do the algebra on test work and on homework, then you're not learning the skill that you need to learn. Okay? Alright, that's what I wanted. And that looks like a good place to stop. Alright? Any other questions? Uh, we, I chose not to do that. Can we correct the questions we